Hi there, Lyme Macedo. It's me, Dave, from LymeMacedo.com, and it was Lyme Macedo. Uh, uh, today, the date is uh, 24th August 2016. Time right now is 10.30 in the morning. Okay. Um, just wanted to share this private video with you. It's more uh, in relation to my journey towards self-discovery and maybe how you can uh, um, discover who you really are. So I just thought I would share this really personal video with you as to how to discover who you really are, what you really want, and what is your purpose in life, okay? Um, uh, the, these are the 10 steps I took to discover who I really was, what my, uh, what my purpose was, and what I really wanted. And it, it has really changed me in these past uh, two, three months. So I thought maybe it would be something nice to share with all of you, okay? Now, uh, you know, it, it, it just started three months ago when when um, I, I I decided to move from Dubai and uh, uh, go to Koh Samui, uh, that is Thailand, just just for a holiday. I mean, it was more about an impulsive decision, but then again, it, it turned out to be the the most life changing episode that I've ever uh, uh, you know experienced in my life. Just that one decision. So uh, I've just summarized these these ten points, and I'll just share them with you. So see if it helps you and. Um, figures, uh, you know, helps figure you out what is your purpose in life or what is your journey towards your self-discovery, okay? The first one is you need to get out of your comfort zone. That's the first thing, get out of your comfort zone. Because if, uh, you know, you're sitting in the four walls of your house, you're sitting uh, with the friends that you have, in the country that you have, in the job that you're working, you're never going to change. You're never going to change because you're in your comfort zone. So it's like the same people you know, the same friends that you meet, the same country that you are. It's your comfort zone. So as long as you remain there, nothing is going to change. So that is what I tell people. If you want to change, the first thing is everything needs to change. If you want to change even one aspect of your life. So the first one is get out of your comfort zone completely out. Okay. And when you get out of your comfort zone, I'll tell you, there you start discovering new things about you. The second thing is you need to take these crazy yet calculated risks. And when I'm talking about risks, it's not just like a small thing. It's not like, okay, um, uh, let's say, for example, you want to change your job, okay? In some countries, uh, it's it's very easy. You give your resignation, uh, you go join another company. But companies in the Middle East, if you were to resign, you can uh, lose your residency permit to be in the country. You can get a ban and not be allowed to come back into the country. So, uh, you know, there are there is a price to pay. And if you look at other areas of life, let's say, for example, a divorce, okay? You're in a relationship which is not working out and you're sticking to it because of certain benefits like money, uh, like for your children, because you say, okay, children will suffer, or maybe because you're in a career, like, Let's say you are a banker and you want to move towards be maybe being a singer. So then again, it's 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 a big decision because maybe sometimes uh, you might absolutely fail. But that is where I would tell you that you need to take, you must take those crazy yet calculated risks. Now, by calculated risks, it's uh, what do I mean by that? See, crazy and calculated. Let me explain. First and foremost is let's say you're a banker and you want to move towards being a singer. Okay. Uh, the crazy risk would be the crazy risk would be resigning from the job and uh, uh, going and auditioning and trying for the next six months or one year everywhere. Okay, that is what a crazy thing is. However, uh, calculated risk is you don't just resign immediately and start going everywhere and then you end up penniless. You need to save enough money so that for one year you can go and audition and go and try in different different places or maybe different countries. So you need to take a crazy bold move, but at the same time, it should be calculated. Even for example, a divorce. Don't just divorce the person and just jump into a new relationship. Who knows, maybe you'd see the true colors of the person after a few months, maybe things are not working or maybe you both are good people, but things aren't, you know, you don't just gel. So, or maybe you both need time to, you know, just move into a relationship. Well, let's look at it this way. Suppose, for example, you're in the Middle East and you want to resign from a job. Don't just resign because someone else offered you a job. Uh, save enough money, okay? Understand that other job, that other company. Make enough contacts. Get in touch with people who have resigned from that job. 
So it's it's more like taking a bold move, but making sure it's calculated. So crazy yet calculated move. The third one is you have to take tough decisions. Okay, now th this one's a tough one. Uh, that's why I say it's tough decisions. Like uh, many a times you can't have the cake and eat it. There are many people who want everything to go their way. Like they would want, uh, uh, let's say for example, they resign from their existing job, but they want the same salary, they want the same benefits, they want the same uh, position of authority, they want the same comfort levels. No, you can't have, if suppose, let's say, you're in job number A, a company A, and you like the job in company B, but then maybe you'll have to, have to sacrifice something, maybe the position, maybe the salary, maybe you might not have the number of hours that you want. You can't have everything. Even in a relationship, you, you can't expect, let's say, one person, no, you, if you love me, you sacrifice your career, you sacrifice your money, you sacrifice your country, you sacrifice uh, your brand, you sacrifice your friendship, you sacrifice your relationship, you sacrifice everything, and then you come to me and then uh, it proves that you love me. So what is the other person sacrificing? Nothing. So it should be both, you know, both. So, uh, so over there, I think what you need to ask yourself is, let's say, uh, am I willing to take this risk? Okay, am I willing to take this risk? And if you are willing to take this risk, then you have to make a really tough choice because maybe, maybe it will work, maybe it will not work. But trust me, you'll have to make that tough decision and nobody can make that tough decision but you. The next one is uh, you'll have to have the courage to make mistakes. See, not every decision that you make can be a success. Trust me when I say this, I have made quite a number of decisions in relation to my career over the period of time. Today, I'm a personal branding strategist. I'm successful. People might praise me and whatever. But that was not the case uh, before. I made tremendous amount of mistakes. Tremendous. So many that I myself cannot remember. It's so many. In in fact, in uh, I think two years, I changed 16 jobs. In four years, I think it went up to 27. So you can imagine how many uh, mistakes I have made in terms of my career. And in Dubai, uh, you get a cancellation, you get a ban, you might be thrown out of the country. So I was taking crazy risks and uh, each one of them was a mistake, but I had the courage to make those mistakes. So you will make a lot of mistakes in the journey towards self-discovery. The next one, uh, check, evaluate and rectify your progress. Now, the one thing that people don't do is when they are moving to the journey of self-discovery, they just... They just go blindly into it and they just lose sight of everything else. I think sometimes it's it's required to take a step back. You just need to get away from all that action, all that noise, and look at it and ask yourself, what the hell is happening here? What exactly is happening? Is it making sense? Uh, and am I going the right direction? Am I digging myself deeper into this? I'll give you a small example. When I went into uh, marathon running, that is uh, to keep fit, I went into it, it started becoming an obsession of mine. Very soon I was spending one hour, then two hours, then three hours a day, huh? a day. Then very soon it went to getting a professional coach. Then I started spending, I think, nine hours, uh, three times a week, nine hours. Then it became four, uh, uh, four, uh, four times a week for nine hours. Imagine the amount of time. Then I went into swimming. Then I went into triathlon. Very soon, I, I, I think I invested nearly, nearly, I would say $50,000, uh, $50,000 or more. And I was just getting deeper and deeper into this journey. Until one fine day, I just got burnt out. I snapped out of it. And then I didn't do any exercise for six months. I put on all the weight back. And then I asked myself, what the hell am I doing? What the hell am I doing? I'm not going to be a professional athlete. I'm not, um, you know, going to get a career out of this. What was my purpose? My purpose was my career, my brand. Why am I going and doing something else? So many times it's required that you check, evaluate, rectify progress and understand it. Get a bird's eye view. What are you doing? Where are you going? You need to evaluate. Others, you'll be moving fast, fast, really in one direction and very soon before you know it, you'll be destroyed. Okay. Number six, I think this one has been a biggie for me. I think it's very important for you to acknowledge your drawbacks and your mistakes. Um, it's just like this, you know, people who are addicted to alcohol, they'll never tell you they're addicted to alcohol. They'll just say, no, nah, I drink this for fun here and there. It's okay, cool, nothing happens. Even smokers, they say the same thing. So maybe you have a psychological problem. Maybe you have a mental problem. Maybe you have an emotional problem. In my case, I had, uh, I had a, a mental issue. 
I'm not that I'm kooky. I had um, obsessions into certain things. I had emotional issues, which I thought I didn't have, and I have recognized, and you know, now I'm really being aware of them. So uh, maybe you have an issue that you think and you assume that you don't need help. Maybe you definitely need help. So you need to recognize and face those drawbacks, uh, which comes to the next point. Number seven is uh, uh, you you need to uh, have mentors and guides. You must have mentors and guides because what happens is once you recognize your drawbacks or you don't recognize your drawbacks, I think it's very important to have mentors and guides because what they can do is they can um, shed some light into your personality. For example, I have my mentor who is one of the greatest mentors anyone can ask. He's totally different from me. He thinks totally different. And... Um, he always pointed out that I had uh, these particular drawbacks, especially emotional, and I refused. I was like, come on, I'm a coach, I'm incredible, I'm invincible. And he gave me some pieces of advice that really made me think that I didn't like. But today when I think about it, I, I realized what he said was absolutely true. Absolutely true. So I think you, you should not surround yourself with only yes men, uh, but you need to surround yourself with great minds and you need to have mentors, guides, and uh, some people who can show you a direction. In fact, I've created a group where people are there to guide me and they don't need to agree with me, but they, since they're not emotionally involved in my decisions of my career, my emotional life, my, my success, they can give me a perspective and that has really helped me and shaped me for who I am today. Point number eight is you need to learn, study and grow. Oh, I, I can't tell you how important that is. You must always learn, study and grow, research. The amount of time that you spend developing your own brand, I, I think that will pay you dividends and uh, I'm a big proponent of that, you must invest. Point number nine is uh, have broken, have big goals, have very big goals, but broken down into achievable chunks with a deadline. I think that is very important because sometimes when you, uh, if you have a small goal, you'll achieve it, then you'll feel, ah, I'm the king of the world. But if you have a larger than life goal, a really big one, I think um, that would keep you busy for the rest of your life and that will leave you never satisfied. For example, I get so many of these parents who come to me and say, oh, my child is so smart, oh, so incredible. She finished her 12th standard. And then I ask them, so what is their goal? Oh, now they'll do degree. After that, I ask them, what is their goal? Oh, then they'll do uh, their master's. Then I ask them, what will they do next? Oh, then uh, they'll just get married, settle down, that's it. That is wrong. That is my one goal here, one goal here, one goal here. Rather, if you have a massive, a very big goal, let's say I want to be the CEO of a company, and then you break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down into a timeline, I think that will really keep you busy and that will give you a perspective of what you can do, cannot do, and how you can actually achieve this. So if you don't keep any limits, I think you can really achieve your big goals, but you need to give yourself, uh, it should be broken down into chunks, into a timeline, and uh, you should hold yourself accountable. And point number 10, that's the last point. I think you need to refuse to get back into your comfort zone. So many times I am guilty of this. I, when things don't work out, I go back to my comfort zone. Uh, and what I've realized at 38 years of age, I can't do that anymore. I can't. If I have to succeed, if I have to grow, I cannot. And uh, give myself permission to get back into comfort zone. So I will not. See, end of the day, I'll tell you this. Many people like to give me the theory no, I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. Yes, you do have a choice. You do have a choice. You can make those choices. and uh, But it's just that you choose not to make them. So if you really want to discover who you are, really want to discover, if you really want to find out uh, what you're capable of, how you can achieve your true potential, I would say these 10 points. And I summarize, I've given them in the description below. That is, get out of your comfort zone. Take crazy and calculated risks. Make tough decisions. Have the courage to make mistakes. Uh, fifth one is check, evaluate, and rectify your progress. Get a bird's eye view. Uh, six is recognize your drawbacks. Admit them. Seven is have mentors and guides. Eight is learn, grow, study, research. Uh, nine is have a very big goal broken down into small achievable chunks. And point number 10 is refuse, absolutely refuse to get back your comfort zone. So I hope these points help you because they have helped me in my journey towards self-discovery and I'm still discovering more about me. I help, uh, I hope they help you achieve yours. Bye from LionMacedo.com and who's LionMacedo.com uh, saying goodbye for now. Let me know if you have any questions.